Well, a deep venous thrombosis will normally develop in the veins of the leg, in the deep veins. And the deep veins are the veins that run through the muscles of the leg. And then if a bit breaks off from that, that is an embolus. And an embolus is anything, a single, would, one would be embolus, several would be emboli. So uh, the condition is embolism. So embolism is anything moving through the lumen of a vein or an artery that has the potential to obstruct the lumen of that blood vessel or of a blood vessel. And here we're talking about deep venous thrombosis. So we're talking about the systemic venous system. So if a bit breaks off from a thrombus, it will travel in the flow of blood. It will go up through the venous system to the right side of the heart, and then it will be pumped to the lungs. But what I want to do now is look at that anatomy in a little more detail. So if we think about, first of all, the veins in the calf, basically two, uh, two lots of veins here in the calf. These are the anterior and the posterior tibial veins. And these are the deep veins. There's a small saphenous vein and other superficial veins, but these are the deep veins. And the reason that they're called the deep veins is because they run through the muscle. So these veins are running through the muscle. They are underneath the muscle fascia. And this is, this is good, it's important, because what this means physiologically is when the muscles contract, that's going to squeeze on these veins. As the muscles shorten, they're going to squeeze on these veins, greatly increasing the pressure inside the veins. And that basically squirts the blood back up towards the inferior vena cava and the systemic circulation. So here we've got the uh, anterior and uh, posterior tibial veins, uh, as you would expect in front and behind the, the tibia. Then these join together at about the level of the knee, and at this level they're called the popliteal. So that's the popliteal vein, so they've just joined into one now in, in any one leg. Then other small vessels join this, but it carries on getting bigger. And when it's going past the femur, it's called the femoral vein. So the popliteal vein becomes the femoral vein. And it carries on getting bigger, and it becomes the external iliac vein. The external iliac vein. The internal iliac joins about here as well. But the main pass the main one carrying the blood back from the leg is the external iliac and this carries on into the common iliac vein and again we see things are getting wider as we go along and of course there's one from the other leg as well where the anatomical arrangement is essentially the same and then the uh, common iliac veins so this this is the common iliac, iliac vein here after the internal iliac vein has joined the external iliac vein there, then this becomes the inferior vena cava, again getting much wider. So what this means is if there's a blood clot here, if there's a thrombosis there, an emboli break off from that, then as the emboli travel through the venous flow, because the veins, of course, are draining blood in this direction like this, up towards the inferior vena cava to go back to the heart, what it means is, as we go through the anterior and posterior tibial veins, the popliteal vein, the femoral vein, the uh, external iliac vein, the inferior vena cava, all the way up, the lumen, is getting wider as the emboli travels up in the normal venous return. So because it's getting wider all the way, there's nothing to stop it. There's, it's not going to lodge in a vessel there because as we go up, everything's getting wider. The lumen's getting wider. So the, the emboli can pass easily through that area. But then as we go further up, what's going to happen 
of course is the inferior vena cava is going to pass up through the abdominal cavity it's passing up through the abdominal cavity up into the uh, thoracic cavity as it goes through the diaphragm and what happens is the inferior vena cava is going to drain into the right atrium draining into the right atrium this is going up the right side of the body into the right atrium and of course it's going up this right hand side of the body in the inferior vena cava whether it's come from the uh, the right leg or the left leg it doesn't make that doesn't make any difference the inferior vena cava is the common pathway for venous return so this is going to go into the right atrium so here, here we have the uh, the right atrium here so this is the side of the heart here like this that's going into the right atrium and of course there's the uh, superior vena cava going into the right atrium also so here we have the right atrium and between the atria and the ventricles we're going to have the atrioventricular valve which is just here this atrioventricular valve on the right side is going to be the tricuspid valve so this down here is going to be the, the, the ventricle so this is the atrial wall here and the right ventricular wall and of course this is all composed of uh, myocardium this is atrial myocardium and this will be right ventricular myocardium here now what we also have of course here is the entrance to the pulmonary artery so this is the pulmonary artery here bringing blood out so the right atrium will carry on there like that this would be the continuation of the atrial myocardium There we are. Um, the cardiac septum would be uh, in this area here, dividing the two sides of the dividing the two sides of the heart. So this will all be uh, cardiac. This will be cardiac septum here. And of course we would have the left side of the heart here, this, this aortic valve here would be the entrance to the uh, aorta. And then here we would have the mitral valve, but we're not going to draw that at the moment. Because we're thinking about the right side of the heart. So what's going to happen, these emboli that are passing through increasingly large lumens of vessels it's going to go up the uh, inferior vena cava and the inferior vena cava is going to join here like this so that's the continuation of that so the emboli are going to carry on passing up here and they're going to go into the right atrium here and again no problem because everything's getting bigger then when the uh, right atrium contracts the blood's going to go through into the right ventricle and again no problem because we're in a, a relatively large area here and when this contracts it's going to be ejected into the pulmonary artery and what we have here is the main pulmonary arterial trunk taking blood from the heart to the lungs guarded by the pulmonary arterial valve or sometimes called the pulmonary arterial semilunar valve now what happens next depends on the size of the embolism that's come from the thrombus in the leg 
if it's a very big emboli then it can block off the pulmonary artery causing massive absolutely massive pulmonary emboli and that would be potentially a, a, an instant death or very sudden death situation but if not what happens is what happens is the pulmonary artery will come from the from the uh, the right uh, the right ventricle and it fairly quickly divides into two one going to each lung the right and the left pulmonary artery so let's follow the course of doesn't matter we'll call it follow the course of the right pulmonary artery so here we have the uh, the right main pulmonary artery this will be the left main pulmonary artery this is the uh, pul main pulmonary trunk here and this is going to divide into uh, uh, interloba arteries and then into loba arteries and these are going to divide down into smaller segmental arteries and we're going to get this uh, arterial tree this fractile tree so the pulmonary trunk divides into the right and left main pulmonary artery into loba arteries loba arteries taking blood to the lobes of the right lung remember there's three lobes in the right lung then into smaller segmental arteries and then eventually into smaller subsegmental arteries. So the segmental arteries taking blood to the lobe segments are going to divide into subsegmental arteries. And what will happen here, as you see here, as we as an emboli, an embolus comes up here, it's going to now start going into progressively smaller vessels. So if it's that size, it will lodge at that level there, maybe at the level of a loba artery. If it's a smaller one, it will pass through there and uh, block off at the level of, say, a segmental artery or a smaller one uh, affecting a subsegmental artery. So we can see that um, smaller emboli are going to affect a much smaller area of the lung. But of course there can be multiple emboli, so we could end up with um, emboli lodging in the pulmonary circulation at different areas. So this is now in the pulmonary arterial system, so these are now pulmonary emboli. So that's basically the, the, the course that it takes up through the body. Very often starting in the lower veins of the, the leg, the anterior posterior tibial, Going up the popliteal femoral iliac, inferior vena cava, inferior vena cava, going back to the right atrium, right ventricle, main pulmonary artery. And what happens to it, depending on the size, it will lodge in a part of the pulmonary arterial system. And now it is most definitely a, a pulmonary embolism. So deep venous thrombosis gives rise to pulmonary embolization in the condition of veno thromboembolism.